Georgian Poetry, an introduction. As a poetical movement, Georgian poetry is easy to classify, as it began naturally enough in 1910 when George V ascended to the throne of England. Edward Marsh, a civil servant, polymath and arts patron, decided that the verse of that time needed to be seen in its own right, and from 1912 till 1922 set out to publish anthologies. Marsh agreed a deal with the poet and bookseller, Harold Monroe, who had recently opened the poetry bookshop in London's Devonshire Street, to publish the books in return for a share of the profits. Five volumes spanning some 40 poets, ranging from Rupert Brooke to G.K. Chesterton and D.H. Lawrence, were published over the years and remain today the encyclopaedia of this poetical period. From My Diary, July 1914, by Wilfred Owen Leaves murmuring by myriads in the shimmering trees Lives wakening with wonder in the Pyrenees Birds cheerily chirping in the early day Bards singing of summer scything through the hay Bees shaking the heavy dews from bloom and frond, boys bursting the surface of the ebony pond, flashes of swimmers carving through the sparkling cold, fleshes gleaming with wetness to the morning gold. A mead bordered about with warbling water brooks, a maid laughing the love laugh with me, proud of looks, the heat throbbing between the upland and the peak, her heart quivering with passion to my pressed cheek. Braiding of floating flames across the mountain brow, Brooding of stillness and a sighing of the bough, Stirs of leaflets in the gloom, soft petal showers, Stars expanding with the starred nocturnal flowers. Solitude by Harold Munro When you have tidied all things for the night, And while your thoughts are fading to their sleep, You'll pause a moment in the late firelight, too sorrowful to weep. The large and gentle furniture has stood in sympathetic silence all the day, with that old kindness of domestic wood. Nevertheless, the haunted room will say, someone must be away. The little dog rolls over half awake, stretches his paws, yawns looking up at you, Wags his tail very slightly for your sake, but you may feel he is unhappy too. A distant engine whistles, or the floor creaks, or the wandering night wind bangs a door. Silence is scattered like a broken glass. The minutes prick their ears and run about, then one by one subside again and pass, sedately in, monotonously out. You bend your head and wipe away a tear. Solitude walks one heavy step more near. When Summer's End is Nighing by A. E. Houseman When summer's end is nighing and skies at evening cloud, I muse on change and fortune and all the feats I vowed when I was young and proud. The weathercock at sunset would lose the slanted ray, and I would climb the beacon that looked to Wales away and saw the last of day. From hill and cloud and heaven the hues of evening died. Night welled through lane and hollow and hushed the countryside. But I had youth and pride. And I with earth and nightfall in converse high would stand late till the west was ashen and darkness hard at hand and the eye lost the land. The year might age, and cloudy the lessening day might close, but air of other summers breathed from beyond the snows, and I had hope of those. They came, and were, and are not, and come no more anew, and all the years and seasons that ever can ensue must now be worse and few. So here's an end of roaming on eves when autumn nighs, the ear too fondly listens for summer's parting sighs, and then the heart replies. The Hill by Rupert Brooke Breathless, we flung us on the windy hill, laughed in the sun and kissed the lovely grass. You said, 
Through glory and ecstasy we pass, wind, sun, and earth remain. The birds sing still, when we are old, are old. And when we die, all's over that is ours, and life burns on through other lovers' other lips, said I. Heart of my heart, our heaven is now, is one. We are earth's best, that learnt her lesson here. Life is our cry, we have kept the faith, we said. We shall go down with unreluctant tread, rose-crowned into the darkness. Proud we were, and laughed, that had such brave true things to say. And then you suddenly cried, and turned away. Into Battle by Julian Grenfell The naked earth is warm with spring, and with green grass and bursting trees leans to the sun's gaze glorying and quivers in the sunny breeze. And life is colour and warmth and light and a striving evermore for these. And he is dead who will not fight and who dies fighting has increase. The fighting man shall from the sun take warmth and life from glowing earth. Speed with the light foot winds to run and with the trees to newer birth, and find when fighting shall be done, great rest and fullness after dearth. All the bright company of heaven hold him in their bright comradeship, the dog star and the sister seven, Orion's belt and sordid hip. The woodland trees that stand together, they stand to him, each one a friend. They gently speak in the windy weather. They guide to valley and ridges end. The kestrel hovering by day and the little owls that call by night bid him be swift and keen as they, as keen of ear, as swift of sight. The blackbird sings to him, Brother, brother, if this be the last song you shall sing, sing well, for you may not sing another. Brother, sing. In dreary, doubtful waiting hours, before the brazen frenzy starts, the horses show him nobler powers. O oh, patient eyes, courageous hearts, and when the burning moment breaks, and all things else are out of mind, and only joy of battle takes him by the throat and makes him blind. Through joy and blindness he shall know, not caring much to know, that still nor lead nor steel shall reach him, so that it be not the destined will. The thundering line of battle stands, and in the air death moans and sings, but day shall clasp him with strong hands, and night shall fold him in soft wings. <laughs>